So our primary figures or shaping of the notes that we're working with in this piece start with two notes in the left hand followed by a repeated ascending broken chord in the right hand. So let's spend a moment talking about how these play under the hands and how we can work them to get the expressive core of the piece. Well, let me play you this first system again. Watch and listen. Notice how comfortably spread my right hand has to be to play its part of the figures. This is kind of a major characteristic of this piece, this fairly constant spread we have to have in the right hand. Um, and this is where the value of using the D major scale comes into play. Something about the way our hands can be shaped um, in D major, which would be very similar in other keys that have sharped thirds like A or E, um, makes these stretches more comfortable. And who knows, this is a very peaceful kind of piece, and perhaps choosing this key was JCF Bach's way of reinforcing that through the actual structuring of our hands. Now, a word about the pedaling in this piece. Pianos were still relatively new on the instrumental scene when this was composed, and any sort of pedaling at the time would have been a special effect more than a common technique. And the consistent pedaling we're so used to nowadays really wasn't a thing until the Romantic period. And that said, the judicious use of the pedal can function well for this piece. Just make sure that you're pedaling only within and to connect the measures, not just blending through them. And the reason the pedal works for this piece is that the harmonies are pretty static within the measures, other than in a couple of spots of elevated harmonic motion. And using the pedal can help your hands stay relaxed and loose, which can really help with the expressive quality of this piece. Speaking of which, let me once more play through that first part through Measure 8. Listen to how I'm shaping these figures. In a neat sort of way, you can think of copying the shape of the slurs for your expression. Uh, I think of starting a little softer, crescendoing through the first broken chord in the right hand, um, just like you see the curve of the slurs reaching its peak on the first broken chord, and then subsiding a little towards the end. It's all pretty subtle, but for a piece as mellow and consistent as this, a little bit of, vo of, of volume shaping can really help. Thanks for watching this lesson from Liberty Park Music. If you enjoyed this lesson and learned something from it, do us a favor, hit that like button. And if you really liked it, share it around. Let your friends and family check it out too. If you want to find more lessons like this or explore other piano-related topics, please come visit us at libertyparkmusic.com. We have full piano courses ranging from beginner to more advanced levels, and everything is online and streaming 24-7 so that you can design your music learning around your schedule and learn in the comfort of your own home from a talented roster of professional teachers and musicians. Come check us out.